This video is about phloem, which is the other transport system in plants. I've already covered xylem, which is the other main transport system, and that was covered over two videos, which I'll link above. Whereas xylem's job is to move water and any inorganic materials that are dissolved in the water, phloem focuses on moving sugars or photosynthate from where they're stored or created to where they're needed. It also moves other organic substances like amino acids, vitamins, or hormones. The term phloem means bark in Greek. It's the innermost layer of the bark, so it's just under the surface of the tree trunk. Because it's so close to the exterior, it can be easily damaged. Like when a car hits a tree and tears some bark off, or when the tree is girdled either accidentally by a rodent or deliberately, like in vandalism. In those situations, it's going to slowly starve to death because the sugars that are generated from the top of the tree, the leaves and things like that, they're not able to pass that damaged section to get down to the roots. If the tree is fully girdled all the way around, you'll also see a swelling above the girdled area where the sugars are accumulating, but they're not able to move down that section to the roots. However, if the damage isn't too bad, if it's only a limited part of the trunk, eventually the tree will add more material on there and close that section back over, and you may not even see the original injury. So what is phloem made of? Like xylem, there's the cells that are responsible for transporting, and then there's also cells that are just more supporting or more structural. And there's different names in angiosperms and in gymnosperms. First, the angiosperms. The cells here are called sieve tube elements. They're wider, squatter, and have more space for transport. They're not dead when they're mature like xylem cells, but they don't have all their organelles or internal parts. So they're always associated with what's called a companion cell that helps load the sugar into the phloem. There's parts of the cell that have larger than usual holes, usually at the ends, and this area is called a sieve plate. It's the existence of this sieve plate that separates the phloem in an angiosperm from the phloem in a gymnosperm. So in gymnosperms, the cells are called sieve cells. They're longer, thinner, and do not have that sieve plate. So not only do they not have as much room for transport, they don't have those larger openings, so it's not as efficient. They also have a cell that's assisting them. It's not called a companion cell, but it's the same idea. Once the sugar is brought into these phloem cells from where they're made, they get moved to other areas of the plant where they're needed. You may remember that xylem moves in one direction, from the roots to the top of the tree. Phloem instead moves in different directions, from where it's made to where it's needed. So where it's made is called the source, and it moves to the sink. The most accepted explanation for how this works is called the pressure flow hypothesis. It's shown here in this diagram with a series of bulbs. And the bulbs have solution in them with sugars or solutes. The bulbs are permeable to water, but they're not going to let anything else out. So when you take these bulbs and you put them into pure water, the water is going to enter the bulb because nature always wants to equal things out. So the pure water is going to go into the bulb and mix in with these solutes, and it's going to get pushed up and out of the top of this bulb into the next one. And if you had additional bulbs connected to it, it would just continue that chain. Here's how that would look with phloem. And I'm going to use terminology associated with angiosperms. In plants, the phloem's not doing anything like photosynthesizing. Other cells are doing that, and they're brought to the phloem. It's the companion cell that uses energy to load the sugar into the sieve tube element. And so if you're a phloem cell in a leaf, there's a lot of photosynthesis going on. There's a lot of sugar coming in. So you put the sugar in the phloem, water rushes in to try to equalize it. And so now it's pushing down to a different area that's got less sugar. 
And when you get to the, the final destination of where that sugar is going, cells are taking it, taking the sugar out of the phloem. And once the sugar is taken out, the water leaves via the xylem. And now you have a vacuum of sorts. So more stuff is going to come to fill it. So this is a very oversimplified explanation about how that works, but it should give you an idea. Again, the flow movement is source to sink. Usually that source would be a leaf or a stem that's actively photosynthesizing, but it could also be storage cells that are holding an abundance of starches and sugars over the winter. In that case, you'll see that move from the storage to a developing leaf or something like that.